Hi, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video, I am going to teach you how to implement the uh, onboarding process into your uh, Android application and uh, you will learn how to implement the new Splash API as well. So before we start, let me show you how this application will work. Okay, so this is our application and uh, here we have uh, three different uh, onboarding pages. We can go to a second and to a third page. So after we reach the third page, uh, then this uh, finish button uh, will be visible. And if we press this finish button, uh, then we are going to get uh, navigated to our home screen, which uh, will mean that we have successfully completed our uh, onboarding process. And whenever we launch our application the next time, we will be able to see this uh, splash screen and after that our home screen, which means that our welcome screen or our onboarding pages will no longer be visible because we have successfully completed the onboarding process. So uh, be sure to watch this video until the end if you want to learn how to implement uh, this functionality in your application. Uh, okay, so uh, now that you have seen uh, how our uh, actual uh, final result uh, will look like, uh, now let's start with our project. So I have already prepared some code for this project, uh, so we don't have to write uh, all the stuff uh, from scratch. Anyhow, uh, now let's check out uh, the actual dependencies uh, which we're going to need. So the first one is a Splash API, and uh, this is a newest uh, Splash API which we're going to use to actually implement a Splash screen in our Android application. Uh, next we just have our navigation compose, uh, then we have our pager and the indicators uh, which comes with uh, our accompanist library, and this accompanist library will allow us to implement those uh, onboarding screens, so you will see about that. Uh, next we have a data store preferences, and with this library uh, we will be able to save uh, one simple boolean value, which will indicate that uh, we have finished uh, our uh, onboarding screens, and this will basically allow us to uh, display those uh, onboarding screens only the first time a user installs the application. And uh, finally we have a Dagger Hilt library. So now we can close that. Uh, here I have also created uh, this application class and uh, annotated with this uh, Hilt Android app annotation because uh, we are going to actually need uh, Depends injection for this project. Then in our Android manifest file, uh, I have also specified that uh, same application class. Okay, we can close that as well. Now, uh, this is our main activity. So, so here we have created a nav controller and we have called the one uh, function named the setup nav graph, which will allow us to actually set up our navigation graph. Now, this is our uh, screen holder class. It contains only two screens, a welcome screen, which will hold those uh, onboarding pages and our home screen. Uh, next, this is our navigation graph, which contains this uh, same function which we are calling from our main activity. And that uh, function contains um, a nav host, in which we have placed uh, those two uh, screens. So here you can see that uh, a start destination is our welcome screen, which will display our onboarding pages. However, this uh, start destination will be later uh, used to dynamically pass this uh, screen, depending on that value which we retrieve from our data store preferences. And you will see about that at the end of this video. For now we can uh, close this navigation graph as well. Let's open up our welcome screen. Now in our welcome screen uh, you can see that uh, I have already created uh, some uh, composable functions and the first composable function is a pager screen. So this uh, pager screen uh, will represent a uh, one uh, page from our onboarding screens. And uh, as you can see it contains just uh, one image and uh, two text elements. The first uh, text element uh, will be used as a title and the second one will be used as a description. So here on this uh, composable preview, we can see those uh, three different uh, onboarding pages, and each one of those contain uh, one uh, image and the uh, two text elements, okay? Now, uh, you can see that this uh, pager screen uh, composable function accepts uh, one parameter, which is an uh, onboarding page. So let's open up that uh, seal class so you can check that out. And this uh, sealed class contains uh, three uh, common parameters. The first one is an uh, image uh, drawable resource, the second one is a title, and the third one is description. So this uh, sealed class contains uh, three different objects, and uh, each object represents a uh, one page in our onboarding screen. And as you can see here, uh, each object uh, contains a different kind of uh, information, so 
I have already prepared those uh, drawable resources for those uh, images as well, so you don't have to worry about that. The source code of this project will also be available for you to download on my GitHub profile, so no worries there. Okay, now we can close this uh, seal class as well. And after this uh, pager screen, uh, we have one more composable function named the finish button. So this uh, finish button is just a simple button, and uh, it's wrapped uh, inside this uh, animated visibility composable function, which will allow us to display this uh, button only if a certain condition is uh, satisfied. And in this case, uh, the condition is this uh, pager state uh, current page, which means that our uh, finish button uh, will be shown only if we are at our last uh, onboarding page. And our last onboarding page has an index value of number 2, because uh, the first page starts with 0, which uh, basically means that uh, our finish button will only be visible inside this uh, third uh, onboarding page, right? And of course, after this uh, finish button, we have uh, three different uh, preview composable functions, where uh, we are previewing uh, each and every onboarding page from our seal class. And here in our uh, welcome screen, we are going to actually implement the logic we need to set up our onboarding screens. Now, the last thing that I want to show you here is this uh, home screen. So this is just a basic uh, home uh, screen, which has uh, just uh, one uh, text element. And uh, we are going to be able to navigate to this uh, home screen after we complete our onboarding screens. So let's uh, go back to our welcome screen. So the first thing uh, which we are going to do here, uh, we're going to create a new variable named uh, pages. And then I'm going to add here a list of. And I'm going to specify those uh, three pages. So onboarding page dot uh, first, onboarding page dot uh, second, and uh, onboarding page dot uh, third. There you go. Uh, now below that I'm going to create uh, one more variable, pager uh, state and i'm going to call here remember uh, pager state and after that uh, we're going to add the one column in which we're going to place uh, those uh, onboarding screens uh, onboarding uh, indicators and our finish button so first let's add a column the column will have uh, only one modifier a fill max uh, size uh, then here inside let's add a horizontal uh, pager for the count let's add number three because we're going to have uh, three different uh, screens if you recall uh, then after that, let's uh, specify the state, so a pager state, which we can pass here, there we go. Uh, next, I'm going to name this lambda uh, position, and down below, let's uh, call our pager uh, screen composable function, and let's pass here uh, pages, and let's grab that uh, item from this list dynamically by passing this position. So as you recall, our pager screen will actually contain those uh, three elements, like uh, image and those two text elements. And inside this uh, horizontal pager, we will be able to scroll those uh, pages dynamically by using this uh, same uh, composable function. Also, uh, one more thing, so I'm going to add here alignment, alignment.top. Now, uh, after that, uh, I'm going to add uh, another uh, composable function which comes with uh, this uh, accompanist library, so horizontal uh, pager indicator. And this indicator will basically uh, represent uh, those uh, three dots, which will be displayed and animated whenever we move uh, from uh, one to another uh, onboarding page, right? So the first parameter here is, uh, of course, a pager state. And I can add here uh, one modifier for now. So I can add here uh, alignment dot uh, center horizontally. There you go. And of course, uh, after that, let's call our uh, finish button. So let's pass here that uh, pager state as well. All right, there you go. So let's recap once again what we have done here in our welcome screen. So uh, you have already seen that we have created uh, already this pager screen, which uh, holds all those information about each and every onboarding page. Then uh, after that, we have created here uh, one uh, list of uh, onboarding pages. And this uh, list will contain uh, three different onboarding pages. Now, uh, after that, I have specified here a horizontal pager, which will hold uh, those uh, three onboarding pages. Then uh, below that, I have specified a horizontal pager indicator, which will represent those uh, little circles, which uh, will be animated whenever we move uh, from one to another uh, onboarding page. And finally, finish button, which will be visible only after we reach the final onboarding screen. So now I think that we can uh, try and run this application to see if uh, those elements will actually be shown on our uh, welcome screen. Okay, so uh, don't mind if uh, those uh, elements uh, are not arranged uh, in the way that they should. Let's just uh, check if the functionality is actually working. So as you can see, we can move uh, from one to another. 
Okay, so there we go. And if we check and move to our last uh, onboarding page, uh, then we are going to see this uh, finish button. So only after we reach our uh, last uh, onboarding page, only then this button uh, will be shown. Otherwise, it uh, will be hidden. So uh, the next thing which I want to fix here, uh, I want to arrange those uh, three elements here so that uh, our horizontal pager can take uh, the most out of this space. And to achieve that, uh, I'm going to add here a modifier. And I'm going to add here a weight modifier. So our horizontal pager uh, should take a space of a 10F, while uh, those other two uh, elements down below, like a horizontal pager indicator, should take uh, only one. So here let's just add a 1F, and uh, here let's add a weight of a 1F as well. Now let's run this application once again to see if uh, that's gonna work uh, in the way we actually want. Okay, perfect. So now it looks even better. There we go. Everything works fine. And if you are wondering uh, how you can change the color and the size of those uh, uh, horizontal pager indicators, uh, well, very easily, because this uh, horizontal pager indicator composable function accepts uh, parameters like uh, active color, uh, inactive color, uh, indicator width, uh, height, and spacing as well. So you can basically change their uh, color if you want. It's up to you. However, in this uh, video, I'm not going to focus on uh, customizing this uh, component uh, anymore. The only thing that I want to do here now, I want to add here a uh, on-click listener for our finish button. So whenever we click a finish button, uh, we want to navigate to our home screen. So let's call here navigate function and let's navigate to our uh, screen dot uh, home uh, dot route. And we also need to call a uh, nav controller dot uh, pop back stack so we can pop uh, our previous uh, welcome screen uh, from the back stack. So now let's run our app once again to check out if this um, on-click will actually work the way we want. So here I click a finish button, and there we go, so now we have our home screen. If we press our back button, uh, then our application uh, will close because our welcome screen uh, has been uh, popped off of the back stack. And now if I run this uh, application once again, then this uh, onboarding screen uh, will be shown uh, all over again. So how can we fix that? Well, uh, we are going to fix that uh, by using uh, our uh, data store preference library to save uh, one simple boolean value whenever we click this finish button. So whenever we click this finish button, we want to save one uh, boolean value and persist that value in our application. And whenever we launch our application, we want to check that value every time. And depending on whether that value is true or false, we are going to navigate to either a welcome screen or a home screen. So now uh, we are going to implement that functionality uh, as well. Uh, let me just um, create here uh, one new uh, package named the data. Here I'm going to create a new uh, Kotlin uh, class, data store repository. And here I'm going to just uh, paste some code. So uh, basically I have just uh, pasted here some code which will be used to save uh, that Boolean value to our data store preference and read that uh, same value as well. So if you're not familiar with the data store preference, uh, I have already made a video about uh, using it. And now that we have created that uh, data store, uh, now I'm going to create a new uh, package named uh, DI. And here we're going to create a new dependency injection or a Dyer Hilt module. So let's create here a main uh, module. I'm going to again uh, paste here some code. So here uh, I'm basically describing how to provide an instance of this uh, data store repository which we have created, okay? Now let me just uh, close that and that as well. After that, let's create here a new package named uh, view model. Let's create our uh, welcome view model for our welcome screen. So welcome view model. Again, uh, I'm going to just uh, paste here some code. And uh, this uh, view model uh, will hold uh, only one function named uh, save onboarding state. And this uh, same view model is basically injecting this uh, data store repository. So uh, after we inject that uh, repository, uh, then we're going to call its uh, function save onboarding state so we can persist that uh, simple boolean value to our data store, okay? And now let's go back to our welcome screen. Uh, here basically I'm going to initialize our welcome view model by using this uh, hilt uh, view model composable function. And now uh, down below I'm going to scroll and inside this uh, finish button on click listener, I'm going to call uh, actually here, so a uh, welcome view model dot uh, save onboarding state. And here I'm going to pass true because whenever we press finish button, 
uh, then we are going to complete uh, our onboarding process and that uh, value will be persisted in our data store okay so uh, now that we have uh, created a way to persist that value and tell our Android application that uh, we have completed that uh, onboarding process, so now in our application uh, we need to implement the logic to read that uh, same boolean value whenever we launch our application and that way decide whether to navigate our user to either welcome screen, if this is the first time they are uh, using this application, or to navigate them directly to our home screen if they have already completed this uh, onboarding process. And to achieve that, uh, I'm going to create here uh, one more uh, view model. And this uh, view model will be named a splash uh, a view model. I'm going to also just uh, paste here some code and then I'm going to explain. Okay, uh, so this uh, splash uh, view model is also using that repository which uh, we are injecting, right? Now, this uh, splash uh, view model will contain uh, two different variables. The first one will be named uh, is loading. So this uh, is loading variable uh, will be used for our splash screen to decide uh, when we should uh, close our uh, splash screen and continue with our application. And our uh, start destination variable uh, will be actually observed from our uh, application and its value will be passed uh, to our uh, navigation graph directly. So you will see about that. And here you can see that we are reading that uh, onboarding state uh, boolean value which we have already saved by uh, pressing that uh, finish button. So if its value is true, it means that we have clicked that uh, finish button and in that case our start destination needs to be home screen. Otherwise, our start destination uh, will be welcome screen because it would mean that we haven't completed our onboarding process. So uh, now the last thing which I want to do here, I want to show you how to implement uh, Splash uh, screen using a new Splash API. So the first thing which you should do, uh, you should open up your uh, themes XML and here I have already declared a new style or a new theme. So this uh, new theme is called the custom Splash screen theme. And the important thing here to note is that uh, its parent uh, needs to be this uh, Splash screen uh, theme, okay? So here we have uh, four different uh, attributes. The first one is the color of our background. The second one is the actual uh, logo which I'm going to use for this uh, splash screen. The third one is the actual duration of this uh, splash screen, but uh, you don't have to specify that if you don't want, I guess. And final one is this uh, post uh, splash screen theme, which is our default uh, application theme. So after this uh, splash screen is completed, uh, then we should just apply this uh, new uh, theme, which is our default uh, onboarding compose. So basically this uh, attribute is uh, telling us that uh, we should replace this uh, custom splash screen theme with our original theme after we finish our splash screen, okay? And now the last thing, we need to replace our uh, original uh, theme. So here uh, uh, inside this application and uh, activity uh, element, we need to replace this uh, theme. So our default one uh, will be custom splash screen and only after we complete that splash screen only then we are going to use and apply this default one, okay? So after that uh, close this uh, XML file, let's open up our main activity. Here the first thing I'm going to uh, inject our um, splash view model. So let's uh, use here late init variable splash view model. There you go. And now before this uh, set content uh, function, I want to uh, call one function install a splash screen and this function will of course uh, implement that uh, splash screen which we have defined in our application. So uh, next I'm going to call this uh, set keep on screen condition function and uh, here inside uh, we basically need to pass uh, one value, so a boolean value. And in this case I'm going to call a splash view model dot uh, is loading uh, dot value. So here I'm going to add this exclamation mark so I can return the opposite value of this uh, is loading. And basically, as you can see in our splash screen, whenever our splash screen is initialized, and that is whenever we open up our main activity, uh, then we are going to call our read onboarding state function and collect its value. So if our value is completed, and depending on that value, we are going to set a different uh, start destination value. And after that, we are setting this uh, is loading value to false, which means that after we collect that value, uh, then we are no longer going to uh, display that uh, splash screen. And now inside this uh, onboarding theme uh, composable function, uh, I want to observe that value from our view model. So let's call here a screen value. Let's use a uh, by keyword. So 
splash uh, view model dot uh, star destination. Let's import that, okay. And before we continue, let's open up our navigation graph here. Let's add a new parameter, so start uh, destination of a type of a string, and that value will be passed dynamically to our nav host. So let's go back here and let's pass that uh, star destination from that variable which we are observing, right? So uh, now let's run this application and let's test it out. Uh, okay, so now we have received here uh, some error uh, connected with our uh, dagger hilt library. So uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just remove this uh, hilt uh, view model annotation. And then I'm going to run this application once again. So that annotation was removed from our splash screen only. And now let's run our application once again. So there it is, this is the splash screen. And after we uh, collect that value uh, from our uh, repository, then we're going to set this uh, is loading uh, value to false. And only then our splash screen uh, will close. So now let's go here and press uh, this uh, finish button. Now we are at our home screen. So now when we have pressed that uh, finish button, we have saved a boolean value uh, true to our data store preferences. And now let's run this app once again, so we can see uh, where should we get uh, navigated to. And now we are navigated directly to our home screen, so we don't see our welcome screen anymore, because uh, we have saved that value, and we are reading that same value whenever we launch our application. And if you recall, in our uh, splash uh, view model, our uh, start destination uh, will be home, if this completed value is true, and that value is uh, currently true, Otherwise, if that value is false, uh, then our uh, start destination uh, will be welcome screen. So now you have seen how to easily implement uh, onboarding screens uh, using this uh, useful accompanist library. You have also seen how to implement the newest uh, Splash API into your project. Of course, this project uh, will be available on my uh, GitHub profile as always. So uh, I do hope that you have enjoyed uh, watching this video and if you have then uh, be sure to comment down below and uh, like this video and uh, see you next one.